guys. So uh, this is going to be your new moon in Virgo reading. As uh, always, the moon in Virgo, especially a new moon in Virgo, because the new moon and any waxing moon energies are very much about building, starting something new. Uh, and then in a sign of Virgo, which is very detail oriented uh, and task oriented, uh, it can be one of those times where you just have a whole bunch of stuff going on, a lot of, to communicate about as uh, Virgo is ruled by Mercury. Um, so there were some things going on. So this is a day late, but we're still doing this in the middle of Virgo energy. And for me at my time, it's gonna still be Virgo new moon until basically sometime tomorrow morning. Um, but, and as always with these lunar readings, this is going to be for the rest of this cycle. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be doing the next uh, full moon or the one after that, but uh, I will definitely be doing for the uh, new moon right before Halloween and then the lunar eclipse on the 8th for Samhain because uh, that's going to be lining up with astrological Samhain. We talked about that with the uh, whole Hill of Tara thing in the last Samhain reading I did last year. But um, anyway, we'll just dive right in then. I did want to say uh, before I started, I picked out um, one of my black and white decks for this because I saw a really beautiful like striped black and white moth um, tonight before doing this reading that just kind of fluttered very gently right in front of me um, and like landed and continued fluttering. And it was just very beautiful. And I felt kind of like a sign that I needed to use one of my black and white decks. And also I feel like um, it's a sign about contrast. Um, so somebody in, I, I can't remember if it was Chu or Ananta, somebody had told me, um, one of the Vedic astrologers that I've been in communication with this last year, um, had said that, uh, the other word for mutable signs, so, uh, that would be Sagittarius, Virgo, Gemini, Pisces, is, is dual signs because they hold a duality in them. They're changeable. Uh, they have a bit of a yin and yang type nature within them. And that's true you know, to all the signs to some degree, in that they uh, contain a little bit of their opposite, uh, especially, you know, the cardinal signs uh, seem very uh, pronounced in this because there's that masculine feminine uh, pronounced uh, dichotomy um, within the cardinal signs and the oppositions therein. But uh, with mutable signs, there's this very, uh, it's like they synergize that opposition within them very well. Um, so we'll see what comes up with that. I feel like this might be something having to do with contrast and maybe uh, bringing some kind of balance to something that seemed unbalanced before. We will be heading into Libra season right after this, which is about balance, but I figure, I think, I think that's more like a different kind of almost, uh, you know, that's like a balance of, uh, two different people's thought processes because Libra is an air sign and, and finding compromise. Whereas with this, I feel like this is about uh, blending um, in some way, uh, some kind of uh, balance in, in the way that you would balance like a recipe. So I um, will just go ahead and start uh, from there to see what the energies for the new moon and Virgo have for this community going forward. And we're opening up right away to the four of wands and the wheel of fortune. So that's really beautiful. Um, and that's what I mean. Like that's a real blending of energies right there. There's a real positive change in the tide. We'll see uh, what else wants to come forward here. It's like, and I'm going to be using the, uh, Terror of the Crows here because I feel like that wants to come forward because I always kind of associate crows with um, Virgo birds throughout mythology are like messenger animals that are typically associated with you know Mercury, Loki, um, other you know sky beings, Hermes, um, you know Osiris, Odin. Uh, and with like Gemini, I tend to think of like the, uh, like the butterfly, um, you know, that, that mirroring dynamic within the twins is also in the mirroring dynamic in the wings of the butterfly. Uh, but with Virgo, I tend to think of, because the crow symbolizes not just that communication, uh, it's also, uh, like the, the cycles of life and death because it's an animal associated with decay and then rebirth. Um, you know, Virgo being the earth element expression of Mercury, those birds, uh, crows, owls, 
those kinds of birds I tend to really associate a lot with Virgo. So, oh, that must come out. Oh, wow, we got the Wheel of Fortune again. And the High Priestess is Pisces. That's Virgo's opposite. So we'll see what I, oh my gosh, the Hangman, that's Pisces again. Okay, so that's very interesting. So yeah, we are definitely seeing like a synergy of opposites here. I really like this, Ace of Wands. Okay, and at the bottom of the deck, we have the Page of Cups. Uh, and again, I'm seeing like very like Cancer, the Star for Aquarius, uh, and then the Fish within the Cup, Pisces. I'm seeing like this very uh, blending energy. Oh, and then we have the Sun on the back. And then the death. Okay, so this is really nice. So we're having like a... Because in many of the death cards, you kind of see it like within the yellow in the crow in the background a little bit. It's kind of got this like a almost impressionistic type of backdrop. Um, but yeah, I like that this has the horse with the sun. There's like a the child in the rider weight. It's got like the white horse. I like that. Um, and death usually shows a, a black horse. So there's your black and white right? Um, in other decks. Uh, what's interesting is that in the death card, a lot of people think it's like a setting sun, but based on the location on the card, it's actually the rising sun. So it's something dies, but then something else is reborn um, from it. That's why we tend to, and it's not the last card in the deck, like uh, judgment in the world or towards the end, really closing things up. Um, and, you know, judgment shows like that final, like apocalyptic resurrection scene. This is, uh, and this even shows, you know, the spirit soaring. And I feel like this is showing some kind of rebirth. I feel like there's like, it almost wants to like tell a story. There's this death, there's this rebirth. And then we literally have the youngest court card, the child with the page of cups. Um, we show like these Cancer, Aquarius, Pisces energies here. I feel like, interestingly, all three of those signs are important to my natal chart. So I feel like um, uh, as the reader for this, uh, maybe, and then, you know, Aquarius and the sun that's Leo are also opposites. I feel like um, Maybe I'm supposed to, maybe what this is saying to me is I'm supposed to tap into my inner child or a child who is important to me in my life uh, is significant for like some kind of, something to do with that to tap into this reading. Then we have the High Priestess. Um, interestingly, we're showing the, uh, the pentacle here, the pentagram. And then Aquarius and Virgo are quine kunk signs. That's pentagram energy as well because that's uh, fifth. Hmm. So I know I'm, I'm kind of not like uh, getting into it just yet, but like, I'm just kind of like very much about the details. I need to zoom out. <laughs> New Moon and Virgo, details, 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 zoom out. What's the big picture here? The big picture here is um, opposites coming together because now we have the one, that's unity. That's uh, bringing things back together. So the hanged man is upside down and then the wand is upright and he, the crow is upright and facing the path in front of him, right? So I feel like this is, um, you know, and then we have, you know, Scorpion here, the Scorpio, the whole, and then we have Leo and Aquarius here as well. And then we have Taurus. So those are your oppositions, the fixed oppositions. We have um, Death, that's very Saturnine as well as Plutonian energy. So there's your Capricorn Cancer energy since we had the crab here. All the oppositions are showing up in this. All of the oppositions are showing up in this, interestingly um in some way through some kind of symbolism and i really like that because i think we are very much talking about a synthesis of opposites this is not uh going to be a very practical reading it turns out because i spent a lot of time you know yesterday and earlier today like thinking okay what practical things do i need to do um what do i need to communicate about those sorts of things and that's a very virgo very grounded practical earth energy but virgo also has this, um, out of all the earth signs, it's the most cerebral. It is the most, uh, it's able to hold within it that, that opposite, that water energy too, right? Um, I think this is about getting out of your head and into your spirit and not to overthink things, uh, cause the hanged man is upside down. We have a crow, a very cerebral symbol 
and also a very spiritual symbol, but its head is upside down. And that is where it gets that divine spark, that divine inspiration from fire. Um, coming right afterwards, it's getting out of your head and dropping into your spiritual heart space. Um, I think we even had like a kundalini snake here or something, or like the, the snake uh, coiled around the egg. It's a rebirth, right? And we even have like, uh, you know, these spring flowers blooming here. And then right afterwards, I almost kind of see this as like, maybe there are uh, like fall leaves littering the path. And then we have some like falling feathers here. And I think these might even be like tulips or something. And those tend to bloom in the fall or they're like, uh, no, they bloom in the spring, but they're uh, planted in the fall. Although in some climates, depending on if you're like in a warm around the year, climate they'll bloom in the spring and then again in the fall um that's interesting to me I feel like okay so that feels like a second chance that something is coming around a second chance that something is coming around to allow yourself to see things from a different perspective let me get some clarifying cards and it's going to lead you to feeling less in this death energy it's going to bring you back to your childlike joy the sun and the page are both uh childlike cards in the deck so there's a real sense of um putting emir yes okay so i'm gonna actually take that emir and heimdall i'm gonna take it because that's your gateway i've seen a lot about stargates over the last week too uh emir in norse mythology is like uh the primordial first entity uh, it's almost like Uranus in, uh, in Greco-Roman mythology. It's that very, very primordial first being. Um, you know, uh, it's the being from which uh, Odin and two of his brothers, I think Thilly and Bay, uh, constructed the rest of the world. The oceans came from his blood and all that other stuff. Um, and the rest of the nine realms. Uh, this is an androgynous being. We call it, we say it's he because that's how it tends to be spoken about in translations in the myths, but it's really uh, he, they are really a uh, androgynous being. That's another thing about the dual signs is that they tend to be a bit more, um, and this is not to say that if you have uh, a dual sign as one of your main signs that you're not predominantly feminine or masculine, that's, um, you know, personality, that's a human construct. I'm talking more in the sense of energetically, it's way more masculine. Um, in mythology, you know, the very mercurial beings tend to be more um, androgynous, sometimes even changing from men to women and back and forth. We see that with Loki in the mythology as well. Um, and then with Ymir, that's like the first primordial androgynous being. Uh, that contains both, it's the synthesis of the masculine and feminine energy that the Kabbalion talks about. I might uh, put a link for, uh, oh my gosh, dog, that's day, that's almost like the sun card. And um, that's clarity and novelty. And let's just try actually, <laughs> well, see, I think I kept seeing this, aging, maturing, healing. Okay, so there we go. We see that duality again, old and young. So it's... Uh, I feel like for some people, whoever this reading resonates for, I feel like you may have felt like you were forced to grow up too quickly because of, uh, because of something, this keeps popping out. We're going to do that later, but in case that's relevant for somebody, because it keeps like sliding off the deck. Um... I feel like somebody felt like they had to grow up too soon, either to take care of other people or because they were put through hardship very early on. Maybe they uh, exploded in their career very much sooner than most people do, quite young. Or maybe uh, for some reason, I feel like because the death card came before the sun and the page of cups here, I'm going to just leave that over here. I feel like, uh, and what was at the bottom of the deck here, actually? I don't think I even bothered to look. Lethargy. 
and it's like a baby. Um, so that's like one of the little gremlins that live in uh, Helheim. So there's your death again. So it's like feeling like, right, so lethargy, like feeling like you had your energy sapped out of you because you felt like you had to grow up too soon. You were so focused on practical matters, feeling responsible for taking care of somebody else, feeling like you had to achieve whatever it was, feeling like you had to uh, survive. Uh, in some cases, if you uh, grew up uh, in poverty, for example, you might have uh, felt like you had to do whatever you could to survive. You might have had to start uh, waiting tables while you were still in high school to try to help your mom put food on the table, whatever it is. Um, there's something here about feeling like this community energy, this collective, uh, this particular soul group had to grow up too soon. And this is about reclaiming that childhood, but doing so in a way that doesn't uh, poison childishness or poison maturity. It's about resynthesizing, re-alchemizing these things, your masculine and feminine side, um, so that you don't feel like you have to be hard and unemotional uh, just to just to get by, just to survive. So you don't feel like you have to be manipulative or uh, underhanded or um, people pleasing in your feminine side to get um, you know the, your basic needs met. Um, and, and to instead really embody that generous, abundant, um, inspirational energy of the feminine and that stable, grounded, uh, expansive, um, wise, direction-oriented masculine energy and really bringing those things together and to do the same. And uh, Dog is actually, I think, the female uh, goddess, so... Uh, I feel like you're kind of cutting the head off the beast here. Um, you, you're you're saying no to the bad blueprint that you've been given uh, by your culture, your family, society, community that you grew up in, whatever, uh, or that you're in right now. That says that maturity means uh, sacrificing your happiness, your soul. What? Uh, you know, being doing the right thing because the right thing means doing what doesn't make you happy and serving others to the point of abusing yourself and letting others abuse you. You don't have to do that. Um, you're allowed to do something novel um, and soulful with your life, something that, that leaves your unique mark on the world. Um, you're allowed to continue doing that throughout your life. You're allowed to uh, have a type of maturity that is healing because it's about taking responsibility and caring about the safety and basic needs of yourself and the people in your life, but in a way that does not, uh, there's also warning here and struggle. I feel like this is very much about, because this is the ace of wands and then the first primordial being. I was talking to somebody recently about um, that spark within you. This is about really getting in touch with yourself because a lot of times we can accuse the sign of Virgo of not being particularly confident uh, because there's so much niggling over details. But this is a sign that seeks to perfect things, seeks to perfect systems, seeks to per perfect itself. And that kind of perfectionism can undermine confidence. But there's uh, when it's too focused on the wrong things, on material things, on uh, trying to uh, serve people who don't serve them or serve the community in a, an important way or who uh, overemphasize the golden calf, so to speak, um, instead of the golden heart, instead of the alchemical gold, that synthesis of, of, uh, of uh, base metals into something pure and refined. This is about getting, whittling away everything else. So when Virgo turns to spirit and is serving spirit uh, above other people's expectations of what uh, is a good person or a person who is serving their interests, frankly. What you get is somebody who, if they can tap into that spiritual Piscean energy and synthesize that with that Virgo ability to really hone in and zero in on, on the details, you get a person who's able to really whittle away 
all the layers of BS and nonsense that have really been pushed onto them and onto other people. You get that uh, Chiron heal healer. You get that energy of uh, of somebody who who knows how to see so clearly, so clearly where their path is, what gateway they need to go through, what doors they need to open, what what they need to do with their life. You get somebody who's able to really see what's important and remove all the layers, all the layers of, uh, and you see like some of these beings are like wearing armor and then like the creative primordial beings next to it are like completely naked and wearing nothing. It's like they're, they're taking off all of that uh, heavy, heavy stuff that has blocked and, uh, and uh, burdened them. And armor can be very important around, you know, to protect yourself from certain kinds of people, from attackers and whatnot. But, you know, th there's almost a sense of needing to unburden yourself. Yeah, that's what really wants to come through there. Uh, is going within and uh, getting out of your head and into your heart and spiritual, you know, into your soul, into that, that spark right in that, that middle of your chest. Um, that energy to really heal the dualities within you, the inner child, the inner uh, parent, the inner critic, the all the little detailed individual uh, one by one, personas and even uh, archetypes, as Jung would say, or Jung would say, that we take on. Um, I think that's what's going on here. And I, I honestly, and I saw uh, Gewo earlier. That's the rune for the number and we're going to do. Uh, it's actually basically the letter G, but it, it looks a lot like the Roman numeral uh, X, the 10. Um, and I tend to associate that with... Uh, that, uh, you know, the tarot card of the tens, that completion of a cycle, um, that ten of pentacles and ten of cups, gift energy, because that's what it means is gift. Um, and even, you know, you could consider a child the most important gift in your life, um, the, the most precious miracle, right? So maybe for some of you, healing that inner child so that you can get to a place of balance between having that childlike innocence and joy and that maturity that keeps you stable and safe and and contributing to the world in some way that's uh, in alignment with who you are. Uh, it might be about also going within and thinking about the ways that maybe you did not feel like a gift um, to the people in your life like you should have growing up. Because ideally, if you're going to raise a child, you should treat that person like they are. You know, we often like will say to people, oh, that person thinks they're God's gift to men or women and it's things like that. But like to your parents, you should be God's gift to them in their eyes. That doesn't mean that they don't hold you accountable or spoil you rotten to the point that you don't, you know, that you can just do whatever you want, even when it's not good. But some people are so excessively harsh with their kids that they don't make their children feel valued. And I think for this collective there is a real need to go within and see how did you not feel precious and adored the way you should have been, the way you deserved to be when you were nothing but an innocent child, you know? And how can you really cultivate that sense of, I am a precious child of God, of Holy Spirit in your life? Because you might not feel like you were treated that way by people, because people can suck sometimes, you know, when they when they haven't done their healing. Um, you know, in what ways can you really get in touch with how you are a precious child of God, right? That there is nothing that you could do, no mistake you can make in your life that makes you not worthy of that love, of that feeling of preciousness. Like, you know, in most uh, religions and spiritualities, even when there's not a dichotomous Zoroastrian type battle, there is usually some kind of battle over the soul in some way, right? The soul is considered precious in some way, even in Buddhism, where there's no, uh, you know, battle. The, the idea is that you 
drop away from the material world to some degree because that communion with spirit is what is precious, right? It is what is bliss. It is what is nirvana. Um, and in a whole lot of other religions in the world, what is precious is your soul. You know, Odin has a whole hall full of uh, slain warriors and heroes. Uh, you know, m the soul is the most precious, right? But they don't, they collect, sure, they collect gold and stuff, but they trade that away. They, The thing that they uh, <laughs> went to war over is who was going to take, you know, the souls to their hall of the dead. You know, that, and if you read the uh, Havamal, the uh, Lokasena, the Volspa, you'll see that that is the case. Um, that that the, the internal being, the honor of a person, their memory, that spark is what is most precious um, more than anything else. Like the golden light of day, it is the most precious thing. Um, so how can you get in touch with that preciousness inside of yourself? You know, because there's no thing on this planet that should be considered more precious than the souls of people. And, uh, you know, some people, you know, they're not particularly spiritual or they don't, you know, that's too much for them. You know, this is probably not the channel for you then because this is, I'm a tarot reader. Spiritual things is what I do. So I think that that is what should be taken away here is that, you know, this, this, where is the synthesis of all of these opposites, these dualities, the different fractured parts of you? It's that you are a whole, single, integrated, synthesized being who contains multitudes. You contain all of these things within you. And yes, you have your own unique flavor of how this is expressed within you as your own unique soul, but you are ultimately that divine spark. You don't have to fracture these parts of yourself. They can they can be a whole. And I think that that is what the task is with this new moon in Virgo. It's identifying all those things so that they can be well synthesized and then tapping into that oppositional Piscean energy to actually synthesize it, to actually blend it, um, to actually take away the barriers between each of those individually recognized things and put it together well, like a well-baked cake. I think this is the second time I've done a cake analogy here. <laughs> so um, we're gonna do some of the hexagon cards again. And we're opening up to Serenity, Heart. Here we go. And Autumn, Harvest, Clear. Yeah, stripping away all the stuff. I kind of, uh, yeah, I'm not even gonna bother to try to shuffle it that way. Oh, okay. These are hard to shuffle, okay. That's wanting to come out. Abdication of responsibility. I think we've had that in a previous reading before. I don't remember which one. It's been a while. But I know we had that from one of the public readings before. Water, emotion. There we go. And plant physical support. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about. And south middle again. So, And we're at the new moon. So we have the full moon manifest those opposites. <clears throat> I think we are seeing... So we are, again, in that autumn... Virgo season and we're talking I was talking about how there's like a stripping away of anything you know like uh sifting you know the shaft from the wheat Virgo being very detail oriented can do that very well um and then we got the serenity of the heart and water emotion so that Piscean energy that I was talking about advocation of responsibility physical support south middle manifest I think because we have this turning upside down energy with this about the sun and we have that like childlike innocence coming through i think this is not so much i think this is about reconsidering what is a responsibility what are you actually responsible for because i think a lot of people if you grew up in that environment where you did not feel treasured um it can be very easy to get in uh stuck into cycles where you feel like you have to be responsible for things that are not your responsibility like the way other people feel about you doing what makes you happy instead of just serving them all the time um, and, and genuinely happy. I don't mean that in a frivolous way where you should just do things that are uh, temporary enjoyment that hurt other people. But what I do mean is if something makes you truly, deeply happy, 
you can't stop thinking about it. You want to keep going back to this thing because it brings you a deep sense of soul felt joy. Then that is something you should really pursue, even if other people don't understand it or don't like it or they're like, oh, this isn't convenient for me. We had this agreement. And it's like, well, how important is that agreement to them on a soul deep level? And how important is it to you to go after the things you want? Because your first responsibility is to your soul. That is your top responsibility. And I don't mean that in a way of like, oh, uh, if you don't obey others, you're going to be horribly, horribly punished. You need to get rid of that thought process. Uh, because the, the only thing that you need to obey is your soul and the divine. And your conscience, right? That's, that's what you obey. That's not, uh, you know... We, we terrorize people in our culture to some extent into thinking that if they don't obey certain power dynamics or authority figures that they're a bad terrible person if they don't follow certain taboos like for example we are in an age now where we can finally talk about how you know for the longest time we would shame gay people um and transgender people for not being obedient to the cultural norms and not being a good enough uh, son or daughter because they didn't fulfill those expectations of what their gender should be um that's just one example where it's like okay what is your responsibility here is it to what makes you truly happy and in alignment with who you truly are or is it to make other people happy and honestly that's i promise you if it requires you to be somebody you're not it has nothing to do with their happiness their true happiness they might not like it but that's not a soul deep happiness for them that you're undermining yourself for their sake they need to find what makes them truly happy from within you don't owe them fracturing yourself so yeah and then we have physical support i also see this as like that springtime energy it looks like a sprout like something that's just starting to grow a new beginning i see that again it's also like that um, balance between masculine and feminine, spiritual and physical principles of really like, okay, you're considering what it is that actually is in alignment with your real self. Now, how do you physically ground that? Um, that's the, the middle between that water of emotion and, and the physical things. But you notice here that we don't have anything about air or overthinking. Autumn, I can kind of associate with air to some extent. And um, then winter uh pentacles uh spring cups and uh fire for summer but uh again the only thing you're mentally doing here is clearing out the clutter and the waste of all the things that have been pushed into your head like by force <laughs> through indoctrination of, of of the culture and i don't hate culture like you know uh, there's a lot i love about my heritage but there are there's parts of culture that are expressive that are um about uh, a shared sense of community and then there are things about culture that are uh sometimes just about control because you know the root uh word in culture is cult so just you don't have to uh give yourself away to the point that you don't even have yourself you know um yeah and i think with physical support and full moon manifesting we're seeing how this process here that we saw with the tarot cards and the oracle here that um and i i like how this almost looks like it's been drawn as a circle and then abdication and then serenity we have this like cyclical and then with the wheel of fortune turning things around uh kind of symbolism here um it's not about abdicating your true responsibilities yes you have a responsibility to do what is morally upstanding and right you see somebody being harmed you say something you do something you you try to help if you can um you know if, if you, you you see somebody struggling you you give them something to help them out if you can you know you tap into what your conscience tells you is the right thing to do but you don't allow yourself to be suppressed or oppressed in any way i think that is what's turning around here and I, this almost looks like a key to me, honestly. It has like a, a bit of an Aries type symbol to it and like the Venus um, symbol, but also like a key. And I see that as like, again, a bit of like a synthesis. Like you're opening up uh, a gateway. You're opening up a new door for you. Um, 
you're closing an old chapter and you're completely entering a new arena uh, in your life. And then right after that comes comes the sunshine um, and that maturity, but the maturity that comes from a place of, of feeling like you are um, responsible for yourself, your loved ones to the point um, that you're, you're mutually responsible for taking care of each other as a community, but not to the point where you feel like you're uh, not being respected, to be quite frank. And uh, I feel like my over-explaining has gone on <laughs> long enough. Uh, new moon and Virgo vibes. So let's just see what the runes have to say here. Oh my god, it came out again. So there's that gift thing that I was talking about. Oh, okay. So this, this, this is uh, nice. I like that. Okay, so this is that um, in Perth, Ruin, Bredo. Neath. So this is that um, sense of feeling. I'm thinking of the death card a little bit here, but it's not quite that because it's not complete death. It's almost like um, it feels like the nine of swords. If I had to give it like a tarot correspondence or even like uh, the five of pentacles to some extent, but without the associations of commitment that I would, I mean, commitment would uh, help you get through it if you have the right commitments, if you have the right support, right? Um, the right kind of support for what's truly best for you, not what uh, people think you need to do to serve them. Because uh, that's the other thing is uh, Virgo is associated with the sixth house of service. Um, again, it's right opposite the twelfth house, which is often associated with nunneries, um and going off into service of some kind of like a religious convent and thing like things like that among other things um whereas the sixth house has often been associated with that uh uh kind of physical service it's not necessarily a bad thing um if you're doing like for example maybe you're literally working as a waitress you, you serve um but you still deserve to be treated with respect right um i think that spiritual stuff coming through is really talking about also integrating that 12th house energy of like converting that into a service of something more ethereal, more soul centered, more uh, centered on your own soul, uh, on Holy Spirit. And we have like birds here. So that's, you know, the, what's been grounded uh, on this planet can be elevated, you know, to the skies, to the heavens, to, to spiritual dimensions. Um, this is often associated with ice, feeling stuck, um, frozen. It's interesting to me that I feel like almost like there's a huge amount of blessings that want to come through. I also feel like, like this almost feels like wants to come out in a circle for me. Like it comes at the beginning and the end because we have the chariot going towards something. Grail, it's the chariot. It also has like a bit of a knight's energy to it. Um, and then it's the cup, right? Um, and that's the cup that I tend to associate uh, with, uh, you know, sometimes you see like a, the high priestess also with a cup. Um, and uh, I do, I associate it with the, like a cauldron even as well as what it's sometimes associated with. So you could have like boiling water used to unstuck the ice uh, or just to help. Even just any water sometimes can help depending on how much ice there is to like kind of melt it. Um, I feel like this is saying that whatever blessings, abundance, gift is coming your way, um, the gift of yourself, your own soul, the expression of, of that that internal joy, that divine spark. It's like you have to move through that feeling of stuckness, that nine of swords energy, that feeling of anxiety, uh, feeling stuck in a situation um, into whatever this cup is. And, and then with the chariot, it's like you're coming out of that. I almost want to see um, what do I, what deck do I want to use for this? I want to see, I actually, you know what, we'll use the moonology to clarify on what the, uh, wow, I opened up to full moon in Scorpio. It's time to release negativity. 
surrender to the divine balance spirituality and practicality oh my gosh do i even need to shuffle because <laughs> i cut that deck and i i'm gonna shuffle anyway just to work through your fears there you go because i was gonna ask like what is that cup energy that wants to come through and i and i was getting the sense that what's starting right now in this virgo season is going to be going through to the uh, lunar eclipse on november 8th and the reason for that is because the last reading we did on the starting of season two of Azure Flame Tarot was uh, was this very uh, progressive energy from like these different phases of the moon and then it, I think it ended on the uh, a lunar eclipse um, so I think that whatever's going on right now it's going to be building up uh, through now to the to the lunar eclipse in November. Uh, and I think for some of you, you're going to work through it before then, and you'll start to see this manifest during that lunar eclipse. Um, but I think this, the cup that's going to uh, help break up some of that ice, some of that feeling of stuckness, is working through your fears um, and releasing negativity. Again, we have the new and full moon, uh, those opposites synthesizing together and surrendering to the divine and balancing uh, spirituality and practicality. Because I think for a lot of people um, with the new moon in Virgo, it, you might be tempting to focus a lot on um, the practical, the earth. Um, but this is asking you to bring that water into the equation. It's asking you to bring that spiritual connection to your own soul and what your soul is calling you to do big uh, thing don't confuse what your soul is ca uh, ca uh, calling you to do because we're, we're raised in a culture and I uh, have a lot of love for Christ I was raised Christian I still identify with Christianity so this isn't a, a knock on the Abrahamic religions but the way that Abrahamic religions are taught in a lot of denominations and by a lot of people is this very heavy-handed guilt tripping way that tells you that um, that voice in your head that is other people's voices admonishing you is oh your soul that's your soul it's not that that fearful hateful uh guilt tripping nonsense is not uh your soul telling you to act right you'll know when you're treating somebody badly because you'll see the pain and suffering genuine deep pain and suffering not just disappointment that something didn't go the way somebody wanted but truly heart-rending disappointment uh, on, a, on a deeper level that feels like I am not in alignment with my my life's purpose you know that um don't allow yourself to be guilt tripped allow yourself to surrender to the divine get out of your head get out of your head get out of the voices in your head of other people who have told you what is right and wrong for you and really check in with your soul and the divine about what is actually right for you that can take some real work. It it's, takes effort to learn to listen to that part of you when it has been told to shut up your whole life. Um, but a lot of people need to do that for themselves. A lot of people need to do that for, them, uh, for themselves. Work through that fear and guilt. Uh, Scorpio is also about power dynamics, that controllingness. That's what I'm talking about. You need to release that, those controlling voices in your head of people who told you what you should be instead of what you really deeply intuitively felt that you wanted to be. It's time to release that negativity, that toxic voice that's not yours and it's not the divine's. Your soul will lead you to what you want, not through fear and punishment, but through joy. And if your soul is feeling pain, it's not going to be because of somebody else's admonishment. It's going to be because of something you know you didn't do in alignment with what's right to you, what's right for you, what's right on a cosmic level in terms of, you know, the basic you know, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not. There, there's some truth to that, right? There, there are some basic, you know, things that nobody should do to anybody. Um, you'll know if you did not act in a in a justifiable way. But uh, th there's always forgiveness and the ability, at least on a cosmic level, on a divine level, forgiveness and the ability to turn that around and get into alignment with your life you know don't listen to guilt tripping listen to your true voice um 
and, and follow what makes you truly happy is what I think is going on here. Follow what makes you truly joyful with all this daylight, sunshine, imagery. Follow what makes you feel almost dreamy again, you know, but like in a grounded way, in a, in a way where your dream isn't just this daydream that you use to escape the, the toxic stuff that you need, you're needing to release that toxic environment, but rather in a way where it's like you, you build that, um, that four of wands we saw when we cut the deck at the beginning, four is a, you know, wands are passionate, but the four is still that structure. It's stable, four legs, four walls, uh, nature's stable number, right? Four limbs. Um, it's about grounding that dream. It's about grounding that joy into your environment, I think, frankly, into your immediate environment in your life. Alrighty, you guys. Uh, I think that is your reading for the day. I know that was a bit long. It was just for the moon and not a whole bunch of other events, but I uh, felt like there was a need for a lot of extrapolation there, a lot of unpacking. And I guess that should, have be, uh, should be expected with a new moon in Virgo. Um, I love you guys so much, and I hope you're having a beautiful rest of your Virgo season.